Yeah. How was that beat? So it's much bigger than Barack. Yes, it's much it is. bigger than uh, uh, George Bush. Right. So I right. Think, so Even I, though you quote you know, the uh, powers that be, you know uh, David Haberstam's book, you know, where he talks about the powers that be and the best, and he wrote the best and the brightest and stuff like that. These people who are part of the best and the brightest are are the ones who buy Barack Obama, Barack Obama, and Michelle Obama are part of the best and brightest. Okay. So they are part of this. See, there's a black elite that many people don't want to talk about. That is also a part of this. Well, There's a group called the Sigma Pi Phi, the Black Boule. The Boule, yeah, the Boule. Okay, so you got these black fraternities and sororities. They're all part of this, this, this whole, this whole institutional thing. I mean, in terms of uh, uh, the groups that want to control things, maintain the status quo, and they, and they have created a kind of like a, a black town the tenth. Yeah. A black elite, yeah. okay, that is supposed to help maintain the status quo. Their job is to protect the interests of the white power structure, the ruling elite. Wait, okay, the ruling you, aristocracy. We, you can, we can read uh, uh, Lawrence Otis Graham. Go right. to his website. I think right. it's ourkindofpeople.com. Right. right. He talks about that. He actually lauded, uh He actually said the black elite is good. Right. Are they good? I mean, they're... <laughs> I mean that you know is is a mixed thing. You know, yeah. you have some people within the elite who are who are very uh, very community oriented, who are socially conscious, yeah. who are trying to help the community. Then you have that other group that really is about maintaining the status quo. I mean, uh, you have people like Carter G. Woodson. He was part of the elite. He was a scholar. He was an educator, but he didn't believe in all that black. All that boule stuff. He was part of Sigma Pi Phi, oh. but then he got tired of all that nonsense. Say, hey, this is ridiculous. We're supposed to help our people. We're supposed to empower our folks. Yeah. You know. So he wrote the book The Miseducation of the Negro and several other books where he talks about how the black elite, the black bourgeoisie, and everything like that need to wake up and start creating their own institutions, stuff like that, and building businesses and doing things to help empower their people. Yeah. You know. And 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 then you got the others who are on the other side who are part of the black elite. Who want to maintain the status quo? People like the Vernon Jordans, okay, who was a, a close associate of uh, Bill Clinton. He's part of Trial Commission, the Brookings Institute, and all these different organizations and groups and stuff. But but see the thing about it is that see, he he thinks that basically you know he'll be okay if he helps just play along, if he plays along and help maintain the status quo and stuff like that. But it, he, he's the one who took uh, Bill Clinton to the Bohemian Grove beatings, you see? Wow. So he's also a part Grove. of this stuff. Yeah. So, so you got to understand just how this thing is played out. you got these black mascots, okay? They're, that's what they are. Mascots. They're black mascots. They're like yeah. the Bud Billigan Parade. The, the Bud Billigan Parade, that, that is based upon a Chinese mythological mascot. Yeah. Okay, it's a creature, a being. I mean, not a being, a non-entity, okay? That is supposed to be the guardian angel of black folks. Yay. Okay, black children. Bud Billiken. Okay, Bud Billiken. Okay. <laughs> Yo, it was created over 80 years ago, yeah. Bud Billiken Parade. And so, we, we don't even know what that is. We, right. just, we just go to the parade. Right. Let me, but that, let me talk to you. Let's go back to our, our conservative viewers here. Right. Uh, Barney Bungalow and Betty Bungalow and, uh, and Joe <laughs> Sixpack. They get in this, this uh, uh, conservative Republican thing, but they don't, even, they don't really talk about the white elite. There is a white elite. There's a European American. There's Absolutely. a European elite. That's right. You're absolutely correct. There is a white elite. Um, they don't want to talk about that uh, a lot of time because they, you know, because to talk about that really, that's a no-no. You, you know, you're getting a little too close to home. No, but I'm saying so, we can talk about race right, all day long. We right. can talk race, but we don't like to talk about class. Right. And about the, and the, the haves versus right. the have-nots. That's right. And most of us are have-nots. That's right. And that's what is going on. They see, they see, they're wiping out the middle class. Yeah, there used to be, you know, you know, it used to be like three levels. You know, you had the elite, the rich, the super rich. You had the middle class and stuff like that. Then you had the, the so-called lower class, okay, or, the, or working class folks, okay. And now they're wiping out a middle. There's not going to be a middle. They're wiping out the middle class. It's not going to be a middle. It's going to be a top and a bottom, a halves and a half nines. Upper middle class, maybe, right. and then everybody else will be working class and really the underclass. Right, right. The underclass. Yeah, right. The permanent underclass. The permanent underclass, according to them, you know, and they want to create the permanent underclass. That's the reason why sometimes I wonder about Dr. William Jewish Wilson, who wrote the book, The Decline and Significance of Race and, and the Permanent Poor, and, and these, all these other when, when work disappears, all this other stuff. But now he began to think, uh, he started thinking of changing his views about more than eight, ten years ago. Once he started to analyze, look at different things, and say, hey, Race must play, it must, must really, uh, I, I may be a little, little, I may have been wrong about my views about race and class, you know, uh, about race, about the important fat role that race plays in the society. But Thomas Sowell really, ain't, ain't gonna change. No, Thomas Sowell. His I brothers mean, ain't gonna change. He, but see, the thing about it is that many of them, because they benefit from this, see, that's, see they've been bankrolled by white 
corporates, white groups, white philanthropic institutes, and white universities and colleges. Yeah. So they are allowed to speak this way because they feel that they're going to benefit from the stuff. The yeah. Thomas Souls, the Walter Williams, the Shelby Steels, yeah. uh, the Glenn, well, Glenn Laurie is no longer part of that because uh, uh, he got tired of all that nonsense. But then you have the Armstrong Williams, the, uh, uh, you have the guy Ward Connolly. Yeah. That's another one that people need. To, this guy is an embarrassment. To, 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 to us as, 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 as a people because so, so he's ashamed to be black. So the African American conservatives are not really in the best, they're not really working in the best interest no, of the no, black they're underclass. Not. They're not, they're, I mean, I'm trying to figure out what are they trying to conserve, the black conservative? I mean, what are you trying to conserve? Are you trying, what do you mean? You're trying to help maintain the status quo? Is that you trying to keep white folks on top and black folks and other people uh, who are non white on the bottom? See, that's what I'm talking about. That's why C. Wright Mills, who wrote the book, The Power Elite, and also a number of people, G. William Dumhoff, who wrote the book, Who Rules America, Who Rules, who Rules America Now, had laid out how this ruling elite is helping to control society. And, and Dwight Eisenhower had, Dwight, had, had, had talked about this over 40 years ago when he talked about being aware of the military industrial complex. Be careful that this group is too powerful and, and you cannot allow them to take control. Of this country, but with the the black uh, uh, what you call it the uh, civil rights organizations, and they they know better than the black conservatives, right? Well, the, the, some of them are. I mean, I I, I have to give the civil rights organizations. I mean, I try to be fair with them, even they though they the have failed. They many of them, conservatives, them yeah. unfortunately, right? They're better because, they, but they, many of them, unfortunately, don't really. Their their mission uh, is to try to help empower people. The problem is that they. They are being bankrolled by some of the same people. They get money from these white philanthropic institutions, these white corporates and business and stuff like that. If they were to do like what Marcus Garvey was talking about, but see, the end of it's being them, you know, their organization had clashed, had clashes with the UNIA, Universal Negro Improvement Association in the African community, because Marcus Garvey was talking about self-help and, and all the other things that Booker T. Washington talked about. And the boys in them was basically talking about creating this this black elite, this town of the 10th, that will help, uh, uh, help, uh, empower our people and the thing about it is that if we had stuck with maybe Marcus Garvey's program tried his program I think that we would be in a different place I think we would be in a better position uh, in terms of being more respected as a people if it's, we it's were almost, to listen. Randy it's hmm. almost 2010 it's over it's, don't you think it's over for the black underclass no it's not over for the black underclass uh, the thing about it is that they see certain things that are coming the brothers and sisters are uh, out here organized, we're struggling, we're going to make it regardless of what these people do, we're going to fight and continue to fight and struggle. I mean, these, you know, the people who want to try to induce that, they, they induce that, 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 those ideals in it where you can't fight these people, you can't challenge these people, uh, you can't fight City Hall. See, that stuff doesn't work. That's all part of psychological warfare, psychological operations, propaganda. And you have to be very careful. See, Noam Chomsky has talked about this in his works, okay? Read the book Imperial Ambitions, you know, where they, you know, they, you know, by Noam Chomsky, where they talk about this stuff. You know, him and David Barsamian of Alternative Radio uh, uh, Network in Colorado, Boulder, Colorado. They talked about all this stuff. These people want to induce a, 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 uh, a philosophy of, uh, fr of fragility, you know, uh, a philosophy uh, of where we're buying just material stuff and we're not focusing on the most important thing. See, the thing about it is that the, the Trial Law Commission and their, and, their, and their position paper, the Crisis Democracy position paper, talked about that, that, the, that the power elite in the middle of them, the ruling elite, is afraid of uh, value-oriented intellectuals, people with a value system. So my thing is the people need to maintain their value system and challenge what's going on.